STV, votre télé. Hello, hello viewers, good evening and welcome to this 8 p.m. newscast on STV. On our top stories, investors and government officials brainstorm on how to make the Cameroon maritime sector competitive. Transport Minister Edgar Alamabungo launched a three-day workshop in Douala today. Also, Public Health Minister Andre Mamafuda launches the National Public Health Laboratory in Yaoundé for a better treatment of Cameroon citizens. It was in presence of the U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon. Those were our top stories. You're watching the complete 8 p.m. newscast on STV. As mentioned in our top stories, Cameroon now has a national public laboratory. It was handed over to Public Health Minister Andre Mamafuda today by the U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon, Michael Hoser. Larinetta Paji was part of the ceremony. This is the National Public Health Laboratory created by Presidential Decree of October 9, 2013. For the past 17 months, the U.S. government has been in charge of renovating and equipping the laboratory. It has been officially handed over to Cameroon's Minister of Public Health this December 14, 2016. It's important because you have need this uh, laboratory to have a rapid response when we have epidemiologic situation compared with cholera, uh, Ebola, uh, yellow fever, and other. Then you have the capacity to go very fastly on the field when you have a case and you have a good reaction because you have the capacity to analyze the germ or the virus and to, to see exactly what to do. The access to quality testing in government laboratories in Cameroon is a challenge. Medical test results obtained from laboratories in different hospitals are most often questionable except that which is done at the Centre Pasteur, which is recognized internationally. The National Public Health Laboratory has been presented as an upper hand to disease detection, prevention and control within the country. This national laboratory has to organize the quality between the different uh, laboratories to create a network between public laboratories and uh, private laboratories. About 1 billion 853 million francs CFA has been invested in the National Public Health Laboratory by the U.S. government. The second edition of the National Maritime and Port Day has been opened today in Douala by the Minister of Transport, Edgar Alamebongo, with focus to seek ways of attracting foreign investors and to make the maritime sector competitive. Henry Wana tells us more. A meeting which assembles stakeholders in the maritime transport sector here in Douala seeks to get needed solutions in ameliorating the sector. Uh, ces deuxièmes journées se tiennent pour euh, évaluer un peu le chemin parcouru et je dois dire que euh this second edition is here to evaluate the realities on the ground. I must say here that it falls in line with our vision in achieving giant projects. The maritime sector is one of such catalysts of development as we strive to attain the 2035 development goal. The perspective of the emergence of Cameroon in 2035. The three-day event holding under the theme, Compelling Force of Attractiveness for the Promotion of Investment and Acceleration of Growth, aims at attracting more investors in Cameroon. Uh, le secteur maritime et portuaire constitue, uh, the maritime sector is very pivotal for the economic growth of Cameroon. The vision of the government is to make the sector attractive to investors to come in and make it competitive. Participants taking part at the event that ends on Friday, December 16, have called on the government to make it an annual event for a strong poor means more jobs for economic growth in every economy.
We go back to Yaoundé where the third workshop of the Cameroon-Nigeria Transborder Cooperation has ended and delegations of both countries have elaborated an action plan as Ivonako tells us. Cameroon and Nigeria, two countries that share a common boundary of about 2,000 kilometers, have once more reaffirmed their bilateral ties as they have come together to collectively develop measures to protect their borders. The outcome of the third workshop on transborder cooperation between both countries that has taken place in Yaoundé from the 12th to the 13th of December 2016 is a step to enable Cameroon and Nigeria to confront their challenges and maximize the opportunities at the borders in the political and to economic domains. To this effect, a local bilateral committee jointly created by the Cameroon-Nigeria delegations have been urged to go operational so as to provide a platform for interaction with grassroots communities and information sharing on administrative structures of the border states. The local bilateral committee is expected to provide effective means to facilitate the work of local vigilante groups in the communities to assist the border security forces in combating terrorism and other transborder crimes, reason why the need to promote public enlightenment campaigns to instill security consciousness and vigilance among the communities at the borders have been clearly spelled out. Both governments have resolved that regular consultations and organizations of activities such as festivals and other important ceremonies should be encouraged in order to further cement their relationship and sustain their socio-cultural linkages. The creation of a joint Cameroon-Nigeria border areas development agency so as to develop the border communities of both countries is equally in the pipeline. Meanwhile, the delegations of the two countries have agreed to consult one another towards the establishment of joint projects like the setting up of bilingual schools along the borders to bridge communication difficulties for future generations. Stakeholders of the Ministry of Secondary Education are building their capacities on the effective execution of the budget program for the 2016-2018 Plan of Action of the Ministry. The Minister of Secondary Education has urged his collaborators to be result-oriented for a better working condition. Yvonne Ako once again. The meeting with stakeholders of the central services of the Ministry of Secondary Education in charge of managing the planning, programming and budgeting systems of the Ministry is to ensure that activities related to the budgeting and financing of projects, especially those slated in the 2016-2018 Plan of Action, should be transparent and coherent. So what we want to do today is to bring in all the actors who are involved in this chain in order that uh, each uh, actor would uh, learn to play their own part more effectively and be able to correct the mistakes that we observed during the last uh, budget. And the aim is to ensure that we are more efficient in uh, managing the management and uh, managing the resources that are made available to the ministry. A review of the execution of the budget program for the period between 2013-2015 has been conducted by the stakeholders so as to identify their shortcomings and ameliorate them during the execution of the 2016-2018 budget program. The Minister of Secondary Education, Enes Ngale Bibehe, has stressed on the need for the actors in charge of handling the budget program to be focused in order to achieve tangible results on behalf of the ministry. About four months after the pre-shipment control program went effective in Cameroon, agents tasked with checking imported products say they are still faced with several difficulties on the ground. Business heads assembled in a meeting today to seek a positive solution. More in this report. According to statistics from the Quality and Control Agency in Cameroon, 30% of imported products come from the Asian continent, followed by the United States and other neighboring African countries. These goods are being checked before entering Cameroon, but much is still to be done. The picker permits the goods to be controlled before they get in our country. That's the main thing. And we are working with two uh, companies, well-known companies, 
uh, AGS and Entertech worldwide uh, known. So we trust them uh, for this uh, for check checking that uh, goods. Uh, but we know that uh, the main problem is the the roads because the program is implemented only for seas and air. So I think we have to work on uh, trying to link our informatic system, uh, IT system, with the systems of our partners. This is the main difficulties. But we are working with the other administrations to resolve the, the problem. Sugar, cereals, rice, maize, vegetable oil, cosmetics and a good number of products still cross-enter the territory without thorough check. Addressing business tycoons in Douala today, the regional delegate of Anor says since the implementation of the PKA program, feedback has been positive. Until now, we have issued about um, a half uh, thousand certificates. Members of SESIMA grouped in four sections held a meeting today to put forth difficulties encountered in the course of the year and resolutions are expected tomorrow, Thursday. Meantime, stakeholders of the tourism sector are being armed with adequate skills and techniques for proper management of the sector in order to attract much more visitors in Cameroon. The training launched this Wednesday in Douala by the Minister of Tourism and Leisure focused on proper hygiene, reception, feeding and security of tourists. Let's now listen to the Director of Training at the Ministry of Tourism, Joseph G. Adu. He spoke to our reporters. Well, let's try to get Joseph G. Adu, Director of the Training at the Ministry of Tourism. The seminar that we are organizing here is actually to improve on the quality of services in uh, all tourism establishments. Uh, here I'm talking about hotels, restaurants, uh, tourist sites. Uh, actually want to raise up the level of uh, the quality of service to international level. And uh, you know, since Cameroon has become a tourist destination, we need to do more and more every day to ensure that the quality of service is always up to date. Um, Actually, this uh, particular seminar that is uh, dwelling on uh, reception techniques, hygiene, uh, quality service, and uh, security of tourists is a particular seminar uh, which is special in its nature, special in the sense that uh, it is out to address certain issues, the issues of poor quality reception in most of the establishments. Uh, you know, sometimes the way workers in hotels in uh, totally up to expectations. And uh, you know, uh, reception is a very key issue because that is where the customers have their first impression. That is why we put a lot of emphasis there because uh, we want customers to be totally satisfied, 100% satisfied so that they can go back to their countries and come again and even bring more tourists to visit our country. Cameroon's opposition political party, Manidem, has prescribed dialogue as the best medication to the ongoing anglophone problem in Cameroon. They were speaking this morning here in Douala during a press conference. Henry Wana has the details. A recent strike action by teachers and lawyers in the southwest and northern regions of the republic is leaving no one indifferent on the plight of anglophones. <laughs> it is against this backdrop that militants of Movement African, Pula Nouvelle Independence, et la Democracy, Manidem, met to condemn the killing of Cameroonians carrying out peaceful strike action, which resulted to violence. So when uh, our friends, our brothers in Anglophone Zone uh, are railing every time for their, their life, we are agree, but it's not important uh, during these rallies 
to, 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 to give an attack for our uh, institution now. You know, we have no choice. Mr. Beya, but we can't accept that strangers who strange people uh, kill our president. It's the same thing. We, we are not uh, for the, the, the LDP's policy, but now we have to preserve united of our country. A dialogue, a national conference is now uh, very important to, to sit together and to discuss about the development of our country and the policy for our society. This is the time for our leaders to put their thinking caps together in resolving the plight of Anglophones and give peace a chance. Meantime, Anglophone Teachers Trade Union still lament over the press outing of the Prime Minister Director of Cabinet at the Prime Minister's office. They equally denounce any call on social media by Honorable Aya Paul Abine on a proposed list for English leaders. Pegna Chateau tells us more. The recent press outing by Minister Paul Gogomo, Director of Cabinet at the Prime Minister's Office and Chair of the Committee to look into the Anglophone problem has spurred controversies and the teachers have described it bad fit. As such, the all Anglophone teachers' trade unions have adopted the following amidst others. The press outing of His Excellency the Minister, Director of Civil Cabinet, was a manifest display of bad faith aimed at vilifying us and painting us as intransigent, vacillating and instrumentalized. We saw the urgent need to decry this and came up with the following observations in guise of reaction. One. That verily, we had asked for the creation of a new broad-based institutional framework with a neutral chairperson which committee had been created and the chairperson appointed. Two, that for sure we are requested and had been granted the concession that this committee be allowed to work in Bamenda and prepare an implementation framework for the grievances within the shortest possible time frame. Teachers have outrightly denounced the list of the pupils proposed English Cameroon leaders published by Chairman Aya Paul Abine on social media. We just saw our names on social media. Uh, we were not consulted like we have said in the press release. Uh, neither did we give our consent that we have personally I have never met with Chairman Ayapol. We want to say that while we share the grievances, the political grievances, and that we are committed in getting lasting solutions on these issues, we want to make it clear that our objective is not holding political positions and people should not advocate to themselves the right to begin to appoint people as if we already have a have a state or, 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 or or something of that nature, uh, we are still in a struggle and we need to carry out this struggle in a way that will make uh, our people comfortable, but we are not members of that team. The newly created committee is expected to be convened anytime soon and provide solutions to the Anglophone problem. The population of Boya is seeking ways to reduce frequent road accidents during this end-of-year period. Within a short while, many accidents have been recorded, especially at the middle lane of the main road in Boya. Ebuneri Lindis. Since the removal of the platform at the middle lane for pedestrians, and at this period where pedestrian lines have all been wiped off, so many lives in Boya have been lost in an attempt of them crossing the road. In order to be on the safe side, many have devised ways of crossing. I went crossing the road, I look at both lanes, both sides of the road to see whether it is clear. And if it is clear, I cross, but most of the times it's difficult to find both sides clear at the same time. I make sure that I stand on one side and watch carefully to see that the both sides are clear in order to pass. Because if you dare attempt, uh, make an attempt with reckless drivers that are in town, they can cross you down and you lose your life. People in Boya complain of the removal of the middle platform. Actually, it is an error from the government to have removed uh, the middle lane. It has taken away so many lives and it is still going on till death. I myself have been a victim. It was a car that knocked me. I thought the road was clear, but while crossing, the guy came with high speed on me and I was being hit. Sometimes you see somebody crossing the road and stands on the middle of the way while he's facing the other direction. Another car struggling to overtake easily picks up the person. Many have suggested ways of solving this problem. The zebra crossing 
all has wiped off and nobody cares. So it is a cause of concern for the authorities concerned to replace it and help to resolve this problem of mass killing that is going on in Boya. On places where the roads are still good, like, this, like these ones, and that cars go with high speed, you can put speed breakers to, to reduce the speed of cars, and maybe some people that will control the speed of cars and charge them more, those who go against the rules they are supposed to respect on the road. I think that the middle, the middle there will be a best solution to this. Things using the road is inevitable, Though, with the risks that follows while crossing, care must be taken, and it is for the government to look into this problem in order to save lives. On our special Christmas countdown, we go to markets to see toys and their values with Philemon Bale. It's Xmas season, a period associated with happiness, thanksgiving, and gift offerings. For a kid, it is time to have a new set of toys as Xmas gifts from their parents. Here we are at the Douala Marche Central, where some parents have been buying toys for their kids. What kind of toys do they get for their children really differ as per our findings. This year, the season comes with a variety as usual, ranging from doors to cars, airplanes, piano, laptops, just to name a few, a strange series is this one, a collection of war items, guns, handcuffs, knives, and others. Maurice Sumu and many others think that introducing such toys to kids may have a long-term effect on them. Le choix de, de l'objet ou du cadeau qu'on offre à son enfant est fondamental. The choice of the type of toys offered to a kid is fundamental in how the kid uses the toy as well as his or her attitude in general. That's why I say guns, knives, and other war toys can impact violence, fighting, and killing, as opposed to a musical instrument, a book, or even a toy laptop, which can have a positive effect on the kids. We spent over two hours at the market and no parent made the choice of any of these war toys. The vendors say dolls have recorded the highest sales, especially for female kids, while cars and airplanes have been bought for the male kids. Xmas being a period of love as well, even love toys have their places in the market. Out of Cameroon, in Wau, South Sudan, thousands of people who have fled violence are living inside the grounds of a cathedral with assistance from humanitarian organizations. Nearby, another 29,000 internally displaced people have sought refuge at a site to protect civilians run by the United Nations organization, VOE. It's called the St. Mary Help of Christians Cathedral. And right now, it's helping more than an estimated 8,500 South Sudanese who have fled fighting around the town of Wau since violence erupted there in June. The church is like a faith-based organization that also can provide like humanitarian assistance and in times of trouble, you need to stand by your people. But St. Mary's, or the Cathedral IDP Center, as it's now known, has become more than just a spiritual home for these internally displaced people, who have brought their families to live on the church grounds until they can return home. Well, I think this is more safe than if I go back to my area, where I have to listen to the gunshots and the night robbery every time. Helping these newcomers is an undertaking of almost biblical proportions. While the church lends its space, the World Food Program supplies food, Oxfam helps with water, IOM assists with health care, and UNHCR handles general protection. But there are challenges here. Like in many parts of the country, food is in limited supply. Schooling has come to a halt, yet people still arrive. And the church has no land to expand or to extend a place where the IDPs can go. So we are congested. But the church isn't the only place hosting IDPs. Just across town is a UN Protection of Civilians site, which hosts another 29,000 IDPs. Although many of them are thankful for the assistance, they say they'd rather be home. Nobody wants to stay, but because the life there is not safe, 
That's why we are still here now. Security is stricter at the UN camp than the cathedral, but some church residents say they're getting help from a higher power. The belief we have in, in faith, that we are Christian, we are praying every day. So this is how we are, we are staying here without fearing anything that may happen to us. The church is hosting more than 3,600 IDPs at three other locations around Wow. Despite the challenges, officials say they will continue doing so until it's safe for people to leave. Jill Craig, VOA News, Wow, South Sudan. Well, this 8 p.m. newscast has ended for today. We say thanks for watching and have a good night. TV, votre délai.